Good morning, children. Welcome to our next class. In last class, you learned about the meaning of habitat and the adaptation meaning, and the desert habitat we discussed, and what are the different animals and plants live in desert, and what are the different adaptations they are showing. Clearly, you learned right. And in today's class, we'll see about the another habitat. That is mountain habitat. So on mountains, how the temperature will be, and what type of climate will be in the mountain on mountains, you know very well. Mountains are covered by snow all the time. Very cool climate can be seen on mountains, and very cool place. And snow falls most of the time. and the plants which are growing in these areas and the animals which are living on mountains what type of adaptations they show and how they are able to live on mountains we'll see for example children if the people who are adapted to the terrestrial grassland ha habitat or the desert habitat can all of sudden if they go to the mountain regions are they be able to live in these regions not at all definitely they need to change some external habit temporarily for example when you are moving to the very cool places to spend your holidays and then immediately you will switch on to wear your sweaters are to protect yourself from cool conditions right so then only you'll be survive or you are able to survive there and you can visit the places what you want to see so in the same way the animals are the plants which are uh, taking birth on mountains right from the birth right they need to show some adaptation they need to show some special characters according to the environment where they are living then only these animals are able to sustain on this special type of climates so mountains means immediately will remember the very cool temperatures and snow fall and most of the time rains fall here and so the plants which are living here have a special character called as cone shaped plants the plants here are cone shaped they'll be in cone shape and uh, the leaves of these cone shaped plants are like needle shape so you can see in this picture the needle shape leaves you can see so these leaves are helping the plant to dry up the snow whichever falling whatever the snow is falling on their leaves because of this needle shaped structure the snow which is falling on this leaf can't be stagnant there easily dry up it fall down easily so that is the advantage so needle shaped leaves are one of the special characters pine plants are the plants which are growing on mountains most of the plants will show the same future and at the same time they are the plants are in cone shape you can see in this picture the cone shaped plants they, so this cone shape is also helping to fall the snow easily down the water the rain water which is falling and these plants can easily dry off can easily fall down and no water can be stagnated on this plants if water gets stagnated on leaves you know the situation definitely the leaves get rotten and they may spoil so to avoid this loss in the plants they changed and they adopted a character called as needle shape character so this needle shape is helping to dry up the snow which is falling on this leaves okay so the plants which are living on mountains 
are also called as conifers why we are calling them as conifer because they are in cone shape i showed you just now the structure of the plant and mountains it's in cone shape that's why they the, the plants are also called as conifers so this is one of the conifer plant so this we had we had in our science lab the conifer collection we are having you can see when our classes physical classes starts the conifers how the shape of the conifer and how this shape is helping to dry off the water or the snow would fall on them so you learned you understood now how the structure and shape of the plants mountain plants are having now we'll come to the animals what adaptations the animals shows which are living on mountains you know because of the snow the mountains look like a white color a blanket was when we spread a blanket how it looks the mountains looks in such a way because of the snow fall and totally the snow is covered these mountains you can see in the picture so the animals which are living in these areas most of the animals have a habit have an adaptation or have a special character of having thick fur on their body thick fur on the body whereas the animals when you learn to the desert habitat the animals doesn't have the fur on their body but the animals which are living on mountains have thick fur can you guess what for that yes definitely to protect themselves from the cool climate so this thick fur is covering their body and it will not allow the outside coolness to move inside uh, and it, this fur help them to keep the body warm even though the climate is around the this animal the surroundings are very cool but the animal is enough warmness is present in its body because of the fur present on their body and they also have some animals like seals and polar bears i didn't show the picture here in our online class i'll show you the polar bear and the seal pictures i'll show you so the polar bear is also living in the uh, cold regions polar regions it will live with very cool climate so it has a fat under its skin a fatty layer is present that's called as blubber so due to this blubber blubber gets digested and it keep on giving warmness to the body so that fat deposit is also helping the animal to keep it warm in cool climates and to survive in the cool climatic conditions so two adaptations we had seen just now one is having a thick fur and the second one is having a blubber under their skin and uh, are you finding any other adaptation and even uh, their color is also merging with the surrounding you can see the leopard color almost it is looking like snow around this snow mountain when a leopard was standing here can't be seen at all it's merging in the surrounding and even this mountain goat this picture the animal which is in this picture called as mountain goat so even mountain goat has thick white fur so this white color fur is helping to merge in the surrounding so any animal when it's blending with the surroundings that phenomenon is known as we already discussed in the beginning of this lesson can you see what's that meaning when any organism 
is blending with its surroundings it's known as camouflage a character called as camouflage so the leopard is showing the camouflage character even the goat is also camouflage on mountains so these are the adaptations they these animals are showing one is having thick fur having blubber in its body under their skin and showing the camouflage why they show the camouflage character actually they show the camouflage to escape from the environment to escape from the camouflage they are showing the camouflage character to escape from their predators when they are merging in the surrounding predators cannot find these animals and they can't eat them so to survive from their predators they are acquiring they are showing a character called as camouflage right children and next when we see there is one more animal which lives in which lives on mountains and it's also showing a camouflage character so these are the adaptations shown by the plants and animals which live on mountain areas so mountain habitat you understood and the adaptations shown by the mountain animals and plants you understood right and now we'll move on to the grassland habitats how the grassland habitats are and what sort of special characters grassland animals shows and how can we identify them with you now so these are the grassland children so in grasslands most of the animals which are living in the grassland areas they shows their special characters like lion if you see the lion the color of the lion merges with the surrounding the grass color is also like a brown color yellowish color like yellowish in the same way the lion's body color is also because of this it's blending with the surroundings and it has front eyes look at the lion face it has front eyes because these eyes are helping them to look at to focus on their prey prey means the animal which they are going to eat which they are going to hunt that animal is known as their prey so to find out their prey to go and attack their prey and to have a focus division they are having eyes in front so these are some of the animals which live in grasslands when we see the another animal commonly we we'll see in grassland areas that's the deer so the deer are having eyes you can specially identify the eyes of deer and the eyes of lion lions are having the eye set front whereas deer is having eye set corners so this corner eyes are helping them to see all the directions so that it will it is identifying it can identify their enemies it can identify their predators from all the angles from all the directions and they are also having a long ears very big long ears so these long ears are helping them to listen carefully to listen the sounds of their predators 
and they are they can run so fast to escape from their predators and even the color of the deer merges with their surroundings most of them most of the animals are showing the character of camouflage to survive themselves to live on planet earth they are showing all these adaptations they are showing all these characteristics so now you understood the meaning of habitat the place where animals and plants live called as habitat and adaptation means the changes which the organism is acquiring according to their surroundings called as adaptations are the special characters which animals or plants shows according to their environment known as adaptations now in today's class we learned about mountain habitat and the mountain plants and the mountain animals what type of adaptations the mountain plants are showing and what type of adaptations the mountain animals are showing and how they are able to survive in these regions you understood very well and you also learned about the grasslands grassland habitats and the type of animals live in grassland areas and how they are adapting themselves and how they are able to live in these areas you learned very well okay so now you have today's homework children identify any 5 to 10 animals which live on mountain and give 5 to 10 examples of grassland animals try to find out only the names right heading of mountain habitat and how many animals you can collect by seeing the pictures from different books or from browsing you collect the different animal names which live in mountains and which live in grasslands understood children okay in our coming class we are going to discuss about aquatic habitat so up to this we have completed about terrestrial habitat the habitats which belongs to the land known as terrestrial habitat so in terrestrial habitats there are different habitats we understood one is grassland habitat one is desert habitat and one is mountain habitats so we had seen the different types of habitats and the different adaptations which shown by plants and animals living in these habitats you understood so in coming class